Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, I received this fascinating comment on one of my recent news articles. It says, I understand your anger, Tom, and I feel it too. But I am left feeling helpless against these big companies and its continuing soul-sucking destruction. The fact of the matter is, these companies are doing a lot to grab our data. But the fact is, we can do things back. So last week I did this video on privacy, and I said I wasn't really going to talk about solutions in that video. I wanted instead just to give you an overview to say, this is why I'm so concerned with our privacy. Well, today I want to expand down on that video and start in a series of individual steps that you can take. Now, these steps are going to be very specific. It boils down to this. All of these things are intentional things. None of them are going to be easy. You have to ask yourself this question. Based upon the privacy things that we have observed, your shoppers club data, your credit cards, even the things you do on your computer, is it worth slightly inconveniencing yourself? Maybe just learning a little bit more? Maybe taking a few extra risks? Is it worth doing some more things? Otherwise, we're just a pawn. We're going down the path of least resistance. And the path of least resistance, as we heard in the privacy video, is the path to hell. Now, you may not actually believe in a place called hell, and that's okay. We're not here to discuss that. But what we are here to discuss is our ultimate concerns and our ultimate privacies. Each one of these things you have to weigh, is it worth it or is it not worth it? That's the ultimate question that we want to find out. So what can we do? Well, this present video is going to focus on our operating system. This channel is called Switch to Linux. And I do have news for you. This is not entirely and exclusively a Linux channel. The first and foremost core frontal point of this channel was always to talk about privacy in relation to our operating systems. So this is the best place to go. Now, if you would like to know why I switched to Linux, you can actually have a look at my first tinfoil hat time, which will be in the description down below. Now, let's go ahead and start in. Number one way of protecting your privacy is to consider using an operating system that respects your privacy. So I have four basic points for you. Number one. If you must use Windows or Mac, any operating system that does not respect your privacy, then you make sure that you go into every setting and you lock down the privacy settings. Of course, in Windows, you can boot up the settings panel, go into the privacy tab and make sure every single thing is turned off unless you know exactly why you're turning it on. Now, of these two major systems, if you're not going to mess around with any Linux distributions or things like that, the Mac is actually a little bit better on your privacy. I don't particularly like the Mac. I think it's overpriced. I think that they mess up their customers way too much. But if privacy is your ultimate concern and you do not have the ability to learn how to or to choose to use Linux, then Mac is going to be a little bit safer than Windows. I'm not sure I'd actually recommend you go with either one. But if you must use one of those two, then lock down those privacy settings. Number two, use computers that have a respect for your privacy where possible. So I'm recording this video on Linux Mint. That is my favorite distribution. And if you are new to Linux, Linux Mint is the first place I would always try. If it doesn't seem to work for you, there's other distributions you can check out. Have a look at my top Linux distribution videos for each year. 
I always include those exclusively for the new users. That's why while I love Debian and Arch, you generally do not find those on that video simply because that top of the Linux distro video is geared towards new users. Number three, isolate computers for individual tasks. This sounds like, oh, I can't afford multiple computers. Well, you actually don't need to. You just need a few extra hard drives or USB drives in some cases. So what do I mean by this? Well, the cool thing about Linux is you can install it on pretty much anything. You can install it on SD cards if you want, although I'm not sure I'd recommend that. I have a pile of flash drives around because what you can do is you can create a Linux distribution for each one of the different services. What type of services? Well, just the individual things that I have around my office. I have one separate installation which carries nothing on it but personal files. So if this computer here that I'm recording this on happens to get breached or hacked or compromised, there's no personal data. You're not going to steal my family photos. You're not going to steal my music collection. You're not going to get any of that kind of stuff because this computer doesn't have any of it. Well, some of the pictures are over here because I use them for backgrounds, but you know. All my personal files are on a completely different operating system. It's just a separate hard drive. I can pop it in and pop it out as needed. You can also do that with external hard drives or USB flash drives. Now, the next area is banking. This one is very important. You always isolate your banking. In case you have something weird and funky going on in your browser, you do not want to have your banking stuff compromised. You also don't want all of the different search engines out there than all the other internet services and websites you visit to know where all your banking stuff is coming from. So isolate out your banking. And I have a separate video about how to do that. All of your work applications should be on a different computer. This is particularly for the people that say, well, I need to keep using Windows. That's okay. Keep a Windows version around for work and use Linux for the other items. You might need one for gaming. Again, if you are a AAA game title, I apologize if I didn't say that right, I'm not a gamer. You might still need a Windows distribution around. There's no shame in that. If that's you and that's your absolute hobby and you love doing your games, I have no problem if you keep a Windows 10 machine around. You could run it through a virtual machine. Eh, maybe, maybe not. It will work. And then, of course, you keep an extra one around for web searches. Now, for this, and uh, again, I'm not going to cover this in full detail here. If you're just doing one computer, if like browsing the web is a fun thing you used to do. I don't know. Does anybody surf the web anymore? I don't know. But I'd recommend using either cubes or tails to make that happen. Number four. This sounds funny, particularly on a computer and Linux channel, but reduce the use of computers where and if possible. Do you like to journal? Do it in a notebook rather than on a computer. Do you do task lists? No shame in a notebook. Minimize the screen time that you have, if at all possible. Take some time away from that computer. Learn to go out and take a walk a little bit. But really reduce the use of computers where and if possible. I do realize that that is difficult to do in this day and age, but it's definitely something you can stop and think about. One or two little tasks could make all the difference in the world. So those are my first steps on how to start avoiding some of the big companies. Remember, Windows is just grabbing lots of data. Mac will grab some data as well. Most Linux distributions will not. Eh, there's some exceptions. So those are my initial thoughts. That is how you can start the process of keeping these big companies out of your life and how you can intentionally take back some of the privacy in your life. So thanks for watching this video. Have a look at the rest of the videos in this series and leave me your privacy tips relating to your operating system in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.